Thanks, Paramesh. So I want to uh, thank and congratulate uh, Paramesh and team for being pioneers in, in the uh, bringing ARM into the data center. Um, they've obviously been knocking down a lot of walls, and, and we're going to see uh, this whole ecosystem come to fruition very, very soon. I also want to thank the Facebook team. I think it's pretty cool that uh, Facebook is willing to share their vision of the future and what's coming next around computing. I think that's, that's all part of, you know, we started the project by contributing things that were already built. And I think what you saw today from the Facebook team is a lot of things that we're just envisioning, that, that the community still has an opportunity to engage and, and, and change on. And it's also pretty cool to see that, that even a company like Facebook is now benefiting from uh, what the community is providing back, right? The example around the power shelf, the example around Honey Badger, uh, those are ideas that are being generated outside of, of Facebook and coming back into Facebook. So it's pretty awesome to see that as well. Our next speaker is Andrew Feldman from AMD. I'm really proud to uh, have AMD choose the Open Compute uh, Summit as a forum to launch an awesome new product. So without further ado, Andrew Feldman. How are you guys doing today? Doing all right? Five years ago, I participated in the first Open Compute Summit. It was about 150 people, and we were in Facebook's kitchen in miserable real estate in Palo Alto. And it, it wasn't clear at the time going in that, that this was going to be a something. And when we now have 3,500 people register, uh, when you have the sort of activity you've seen and will continue to see and can go see in the lobby, from all the vendors, what you see is that, that Frank and team were able to tap into something that was really important. And it's a pleasure to participate. So we're going to take you on quite a journey today. I guess we had a rap video earlier, and, and now we've got photos of papal inaugurations. So I think we're, we're going to show you that we can span some, some territory here at, at Open Compute. I, I ask you to, to look at these two photos. They're taken from the same vantage point. Uh, they're eight years apart. And they show how we have changed the way we interact with the world. Okay, And I want you to think about that, and I want you to think about not only has it changed the way we interact with the world, but it's put the data center into our daily experiences. Because on the right side, every one of these videos of the inauguration, every one of them was stored in the cloud, which ended in a data center. Every one of them was emailed. Everyone was tweeted about. All right, this, what you're seeing here, put the data center smack in the middle of our lives and how we experience exciting things and the birth of our children and everything that is exciting now has a data center element. And for me, when I try and think about what's interesting and, and the directions the data center will go, I like to begin on the client side because that's where the benefit of the data center is delivered. And what's interesting about these devices is they can't do any interesting work, right? The devices that you have in your pockets right now, if I asked you to turn off Wi-Fi, all right, or if I asked you to turn off the phone service, you've got an Angry Bird player, right? You don't have an interesting device. And yet, what the data center does is it allows that same device to display all the world's information, your friends, your social map, a search, how to get to a good taco store, all right? And, and that's what's so fascinating about the dynamic of the market we're in right now. The handset, the tablet, they present the answers. The real work is being done in the data centers. I know we've gone a couple slides now without mentioning the Internet of Things, and so we probably ought to get that out of the way right now. So there. Um, I'm not going to talk about that, and I'm not particularly, for me, interested in it, to be honest. Um, what I'm going to talk about is why the infrastructure and why the demands of things you know today, not a smart home and not 
a beagle with a, with a radio transmitting collar. We're not gonna talk about that. That may or may not happen. Um, but what we are gonna talk about is how we're gonna see more users and more devices and why I'm sure of that and why that will add tremendous demand on the data centers and why it forces us to rethink the type of infrastructure we put there. Let's just begin with some simple observations. A third of the world has internet access. All right, so we don't have to think of anything new. We got two thirds of the world that wanna have what we have today. We even know how they're gonna get internet access. We've got 6.1 billion cell phone subscriptions, but only a billion smartphones. So we know that the internet is going to be delivered to these people by a phone. We know how to get to them. And we know that this puts tremendous pressure on the data center. We know that in existing markets, our propensity to spend more time online with new devices is progressing with dazzling speed. In a three year period, we went from basically nobody to a third of the population with a tablet. All right, now I watch TV with a tablet. I don't know if anybody else does that. I sort of scroll through and you annotate television. Um, more time in the cloud, more time and more work being done in data centers like the ones that Facebook has put photos up. So the interesting question as we sit and contemplate what we ought to be building, what our data centers ought to look like, what changes we ought to make, what technologies we ought to invent, the interesting questions are, of course, is you know, what will 2021 look like? Five years ago, Frank's beard was smaller and he wasn't a rock star. What will 2021 hold? Right? Five years ago, we were in a kitchen. If we continue to grow at this rate, in five years, we'll be in the new 49er stadium, hopefully celebrating with them. So here's some questions I ask you, and some questions I ask myself and the team, and we ponder on. Can we envision a world with less compute, with less data in the cloud? with larger workloads that are more difficult to parallelize, with the display of information being less important, and with power and space being less important. All right, th th these seem to me to capture a bounding box for all of us as we think about which servers to build, which processors to build, and how we look forward. And when we look forward, it's been my my approach to sometimes look back. And one of the things we've learned in the history of compute is that smaller, lower cost, higher volume CPUs have always won. There is no exception to this. All right. What this, plus the following fact that last year we had about 8 billion ARM CPUs shipped compared to about 13 million x86 server CPUs leads me to believe that ARM will play a monstrous role and that ARM CPUs will play a monstrous role in the building of our future data centers. At AMD, we're committed both to x86 and to ARM. And we are announcing today the first 28 nanometer server CPU from an established server vendor you can come and see the part, and see the boards in our, in our booth. An eight core SOC, 64 gig of DRAM. It's based on ARM's A57 core. It'll be sampling in a few weeks. You can also see uh, in our booth, the development kit, which is uh, 
a motherboard with the processor down, assorted IOs, allowing both software development as well as, as hardware testing. We're also announcing today I thought of putting all of these in my pockets, and then I felt like I'd be one of those clown cars at the circus where clowns kept coming in and out. Um, this is an eight-core server. And this is based on uh, our Seattle part. And we are placing the IP for it into the open compute community. It is compliant with, thank you, Thank you. It is compliant with the Group Hug standard, and it is available for our, our partner integrators to begin building with immediately. I think one of the things I've learned, I came out of the, the networking industry where collaboration and community uh, is a bad joke. Um, uh, that we are racing forward, both in the ARM community and in open compute more broadly, with a combination of standards, collaboration, and community that is accelerating the changes that are happening, particularly in the ARM ecosystem. And while many complain that the ARM ecosystem is not fully mature for software, I would say we've passed youth and are now in a gangly adolescent stage. What, what you see in this slide is some of the good work done by the Lenaro Foundation, and that we have, with our eval boards, Linux distributions that include compilers, debuggers, libraries, emulators, profilers, a full set of, of software languages, operating systems, and hypervisors that have been tested and proven and are now compliant with ARM. And this is part of the development kit that we're putting out into the, into the market. Let me wrap up with uh, some prognostications. The good thing about these is you're always sure to be wrong. Um, but, but I'm not afraid. I think by 2019, ARM commands a quarter of the server market. I think that custom ARM CPUs are the norm for mega data centers. That if you have more than, say, 100,000 servers, you will be engaged with either a partner or yourself in the customization, not a little bit, but the meaningful customization, including IP that is likely yours, of an ARM processor. I continue to believe that smaller, more efficient x86 CPUs will dominate in the x86 segment. I think what we will continue to see and what you heard in bits and pieces was something I'm very proud of is sort of the rise of, of fabrics in our, in our ecosystem, something started by, by C-Micro, a company I was a part of for many years. At AMD, we will be the leaders in ARM CPUs for servers. This is not a one-generation process. It will be generation after generation after generation. And each will improve. Each will be more closely tied to the software and to the hardware enclosure that it lives in. I look forward to talking to you guys next year. Thank you.